What's up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. Today is number 15. 15. What's up? Well, weather's finally changing. It's hot. Yeah, all these folks did their uh, homework and did their frost seeding. It's uh, about to germinate, I would say. Yeah, it is. Everything in my area is all greening up. Yeah, PA's finally got a couple warm days in a row. Mm Mm-hmm gonna cool off again but i mean there's oh, yeah. there's some warm stuff coming and people are gonna start seeing some sprouts here yeah this weekend at least here in maryland is supposed to what's gonna be down in the 30s again mm-hmm. so it's just it happens every year it's still technically a little bit early you know for for us here to be planting i mean where my farm is in western pa i'm not gonna be planting anything till end of may early june Mm. yeah just because you got there's still a chance of frost and if you plant too early and it something you know something besides clover it's gonna frost out right right ain't worth taking a chance no so i want to jump in huh i was gonna say you could address your weeds too if they start to green up before you you can you can give give them a good spray and before you go to uh disc definitely um i want to jump in Jump, jump in a jump. jump in a pool. You jump might a, have to. It's probably warm for you. So, um, I know we talked about this on I think two podcasts ago, um, where we compared disking plots to no till, and how we referenced somebody that tradi- that did no till, where they gained like a half a point in organic matter within like five to ten years or something like that and he was joyful and he was joyful yeah (laughs) that's fine um and that's fine you know that's what you want to do but to me and my experience the quickest way is to just disc the ground and incorporate that green material back in the ground so my new farm last year um the farmer there where we get a piece of that to plant food plots is he's been no-tilling for seven years they use no cover crops and when i was there the fields were just cracking dry the soil looked terrible (laughs) and i did a soil sample where we were where we planted our uh food plots at that was last year in 20 it'd be march of 2022 i did a soil sample well i just did a soil sample uh two weeks ago and I got mm. the results back. So I want to I want to read them out. They're all right here. Um, I want to read them out to show people just by disking, planting a little bit of annuals, and have and incorporating enough fertilizer and lime according to a soil sample. Because a lot of guys that I'll talk to, you know, they'll have a soil sample where it says, you know, three thousand pounds of lime or something, and they add two three hundred pounds, and they'll met Dave. I added lime, but nothing nothing changed yeah well Well, that was a big thing this week on facebook it was someone Um, asked the question again the same question about how much lime yeah the ratio of pell lime to ag lime same thing that that type of thing yeah yeah Yeah. some someone's putting out some bad info there somewhere yeah Um, we can talk about that too is is a little bit of lime you know pellet compared to um let's let's tack it on but you get go ahead with the soil sample there all right, guys. So most of you probably, probably listen, you follow through the, through my YouTube channel and you've kept up to date with the videos and stuff. So the first year on our on one side, I haven't got all my samples back. This is just the one side. Um, the pH was a 6.2. I don't, Chris, you don't even know this, but pH was 6.2. The CEC was a 5.7. And organic matter, organic matter was 4.0. Okay. And that's before you started? That's when you first got? That's when we first got the place. Okay. Gotcha. Um, my P was in the medium. My K was extremely low. Calcium was low. Magnesium was medium. Okay. okay. Jumping to now pH 6.8 mm-hmm. it went from a 6.2 to 
to a 6.8. Okay. Organic or CEC is now a 7.2. All right. And it, and it was, what did I say? 5.8. Five. Something. Yeah. Um, now the organic matter is 5.4. Mm-hmm. And it was a 4.0. Okay, so you gained a point to two points yeah. on each thing. Yep. Uh, you gained, what, six tenths or so on your pH. Yep. Now, how much, how much lime do you think you put on last year? The first Manzac we went to truck supply, I remember, and we bought, uh, I think we bought 500 pounds. Okay. And we put that on there. Right. Um, it called. Well, actually, I, I can tell you exactly what we added because uh, we followed this whole sample. So it was twelve hundred fifty pounds of lime per acre, and it's only okay. a, it's only it's a smidge more than a than a quarter acre. Okay, so yeah. so we added that, and so then you you did like a third of the recommendation, which yeah. is a little a little right. A little staunch. Yeah. A little stout. But that's okay. <clears throat> yep. So then my P now is very high. My K is adequate. Calcium is now adequate. And magnesium is adequate. Okay. So everything is holding in the soil. It's been one year. Haven't had haven't added fertilizer since uh August. Last August. Mm -hmm. and here we are almost a year into it and the so it's holding the nutrients um it calls for zero lime so mm -hmm. i we spent the money we put the lime in now this year don't need lime right the fertilizer is so high and adequate that i don't i don't need nothing don't need nothing at this point i don't need nothing so the you have the initial cost up front mm -hmm. you know to get it right to get the lime and you know, this is a, you know, just a one case scenario. I mean, I can go through soil samples for days, but um, each soil is going to react differently and stuff like that. But um, we but added. You you would still use a little bit of starter fertilizer when you plant something in June. Yes, I will. Yep. Yep. I'll tell you exactly. I just wanted to say, I just wanted to say that because yeah. people are going to say, I don't need nothing. Yeah. The sample's good. Yep. Well, it's good, but. Mm -hmm. And I probably will throw in like two bags of lime, right? Just just to kind of offset the fertilizer, offset all the all the filler and, and fertilizers. Right. Um, and I can tell you know you guys exactly what we planted. Uh, we came in in March. We added the lime right on top of the soil. Mm -hmm. We came back in June and we planted overhaul from mm -hmm. the main outdoors. I let that grow all year until about August tenth or something. And I literally mowed it with my pull behind piece of junk mower I have that, that you are familiar with. Um, you fixed I, it. Yep. I didn't till, but I disked that green material back in. Have a video right on my YouTube channel about it. I turned that duff back into the soil and mm -hmm. I planted um, bombshell. Didn't spray it. I didn't spray it. No. Nope. nope. Just turned it back in. Turned the green stuff right back in. Yep. And then I planted bombshell, which is brassicas, and I mixed in a bottle of comeback kit. Well, and I made that stipulation because a lot of people, you know, when they talk about uh, taking down a crop, they they want to spray it, dry it out so that it's easier to, to rip through with the harrows or the discs or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of makes, makes kind of but... it's kind of defeating what you're, you know if you're trying to put green manure back in you want to disc it in green you mm -hmm. don't want to dry it out with herbicide yeah. i just yeah. wanted to stipulate that because there's a lot of people that would uh definitely spray that yeah i mean in some cases you may have to you know um but in my case i didn't need to it was basically you know there there was you know there was some ragweed in there a little bit um but majority of it was what i planted and I turn that, I only disc maybe three, four inches, turn that right back into the soil. And the soil, 
you know, when you do that, you're turning those lead, those, that material, it's not just on top of the soil, it's incorporated in the soil. Yeah. So then you have tunnels with that stuff in there where nutrients and water can flow and actually hold moisture and things. Because I think a big mistake is where people take the soil and they use a, a roller and they flatten that soil out like a pancake. Mm-hmm. Because what happens when you have concrete? Water hits it and it just runs off. Mm-hmm. So when you don't smash that soil and compact it like concrete, and you just basically lightly drag it or whatever, it's not compacted. So now the water has it can flow and and the soil can actually absorb it. Right. That's all I did, and we're good to go. Yeah, I mean. Like I said, what I was getting to was people that want to spray it to get through it easier. If if you want to get through it easier, just take a brush hog to it or something, mm-hmm. chop it up finely, and then you can really disc it in and get it to decompose quicker that way. Yeah. Yep. You know, because there's a lot of people that are, you know, oh, I've got last year's rye coming up, and uh, how do I terminate this stuff? Mm-hmm. You know, well, just – in the dough stage, go out and mow it down and chop it up, you know, and get it to a point that you can get it to disc in and get in- incorporated. I made the mistake a couple of years ago. I let it go all summer just to see how high it would get. Mm-hmm. Well, this stuff was six and seven foot tall. Yep. And I had to brush hog the field like three times just to get it all chopped down. And then literally I took the harrows over it and I was like raking stuff off. And mm-hmm. I had so much yeah. there that I couldn't disc it in. So I had to actually drag some of it off the field and then go back and disc it in. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I kind of shot myself in the foot there. Right. I've done that with buckwheat too. Well, like... I'm just, uh, you know, you, you learn by mistakes you make. You mm-hmm. can't be afraid to make a mistake. I mean, it, there's nothing that's so terrible that you can't fix. Right. You know, so, you know, I, I, as everybody knows, I love to experiment with stuff. So I, I just let that stuff just go crazy. It was winter wheat and rye. And uh, yeah, it was six, seven feet tall and the deer were bedding in it. The turkeys were all through it. You planted ryegrass, didn't you? No, no. Admit it. You planted ryegrass. I haven't done that since throw and grow about 12 years ago. Nope. Um, yeah, I've done that with, they didn't eat, they didn't eat it then either. Right. <laughs> um, buckwheat, you know, sometimes I've grew that in the, in the spring and summer and, you know, it's kind of real thick and stuff. So you just mow it down and then turn it back in. Yeah. Sometimes if it, if you get a really good stand and it gets really high, it, you need to chop it up. Yeah. Now, if sure. you have, if you have a a rotor tiller Mm -hmm. it's a little bit easier right to to work in but then it can kind of get tangled up you know oh yeah it gets wrapped around the times for sure so it's it's a case-by-case situation Mm -hmm. yeah depends how thick it is yep what kind of equipment you know you have to work with and all that for sure um sure so the equivalent of pellet lime and ag lime to me is the same there's some people that will say, oh, you can use half the recommended rate or something of pellet lime compared to ag lime. It, it's just not true. Well, what it all breaks down to is that, that calcium carbonate equivalent. Mm-hmm. And if you can uh, – you know, when I, had a, when I had a lime truck come, he had the uh, redot, the equivalent for me, and it was like – 98 percent or something the 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 calcium carbonate equivalent and Mm -hmm. so that's as close as 100 percent as you can get um so you've got an apple it's at 98 point something percent let's just call it 100 percent and then you go to the store and you buy these bags of pell lime right well flip that bag over read the label and see what the percentage is of the calcium carbonate equivalent. Now, CCE. CCE. Now, 
if, and I say if, it is not 100%, then you have to do math. If it is 100%, now you're comparing apples to apples. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it is 100 pounds of pell lime equals 100 pounds of ag lime. If it is not, if, like I said, if the bag is, you know, let's say 50%, I know that's crazy, but just for math purposes to make it easy. If you have 100% ag lime and you have 50% bag, double it up. You got to double up the bag to get that 100%. Mm -hmm. equivalent to the ag lime yeah see how easy that is now people people make that really 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 hard yeah because they go by the simple saying of you it's it's half the recommended rate well right. they don't even know why no no you're, and there's I, I don't know that there's any science out there that would prove that other I, than what i just said yeah i don't either but <clears throat> that was just kind of like an old standard of you know you could use half the recommended rate of pellet line compared to act well pellet line is the same thing it, it's just com it's just it's, turned into a pellet for pushed easier into a screen right to to yeah. easy for easier spreading because yeah, it's, it's forced through a screen and made into little pellets so that you can yeah. spread it easy and in and, right. and it's uh, for user convenience yeah yeah you know bag for lime sure. you need a, a different spreader to do it unless you want to be uh one of those guys on uh the internet spread it by hand oh yeah in their fancy jeans that's you oh my bedazzled jeans your <laughs> your bedazzled <laughs> jeans yes i think not yeah i think not me and you tried that just yeah, just, just, just just for the fun of it just for the fun we bought a bag of, of powder lime oh my gosh and it was it was the dumbest thing yeah that i've ever attempted to do in my life yeah and I, I think that's why there's only 10 second clips of somebody doing that on the internet. Right. Because they, they say, oh, well, you can do it this way. Yeah, you, you can. Could. You can do it. You could if you're that dumb. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do that. No. I no. mean, I guess if you if you absolutely had to. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess it's a way to do it. But I, I, would, it, I wouldn't do it that way. It, no. I I'd would get, probably take like I'd take oh, a freaking shovel and well, swing it or something. Yeah, I mean, or like you could get a buddy to drag you around mm -hmm. on a utility trailer or something yeah. and dump it all out on a utility trailer and just toss it with a shovel, you know, let them drive around slowly and just toss it or or you know, if you're really going to do it by hand, you get like an old milk jug or something cut the lid off and so mm -hmm. you have a handle and you can take that and fling it out there or a bucket or something right. i can't see taking a bag and going like this and it, the wind's blowing it all over you and it's falling it, what's that doing to your skin <laughs> what's that doing to your clothes it's, it's causing getting, uh it's pigment. getting in your it's, it's causing, getting in your eyes and yeah. you're breathing it you yeah know. it's what causing is, pigmentation <laughs> pigmentation on your skin <sighs> Yeah, silliness. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever, sure. you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat, man. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm not. You were strict on that. I'm not doing yeah, it. I'm not doing it. Not gonna have it. Nope, I ain't doing it either. Okay. Um, we agreed on something. Yeah, finally. Um, fourth gear because I this this is huge. Oh boy. Uh, so <laughs> I I read an article. Okay, it's it's a study that basically says in order to or not in order to, but in order to, I should just say it, in order to have bigger deer, mm -hmm. a health in order to have a healthier deer herd. Okay, it it's dependent on quality forage. New study shows, and I read it. I'm like, really. It's an old study to me. But, I mean, okay. how, how's that a new study? Right. So there, there's a debate on the internet of planting spring and summer food plots where it has zero impact on the health of the deer. And well, in this study, 
is saying the complete opposite that you and, and it's not necessarily spring and summer food plots it, it's it's the it's forage to begin with like some areas just don't have food because you have a browse line it you have closed canopy there's no there's no food at ground level and if you're planting spring and summer food plots in that type of situation you're going to have a bigger impact on the herd because there's no other food just okay. like think of the farm there was no food around no ag no food anywhere planted those spring and summer food plots saw a drastic change within the first year sure if you're in an area that has adequate food ag hedgerows small patches of woods where you have tons of browse and stuff you planting a spring and summer food plot is going to have a little impact because they're they're already have sufficient amount of food okay i i want to i love doing this i want to be the devil's advocate here yeah what okay. do you got the the people that are saying that it's not beneficial to them are probably the same people that are putting out minerals and why are they putting out minerals because they say they want to help their deer herd right and they want to lactating uh does and mm -hmm. healthy fawns and you know it's got you know give them good genetics and nutrition gotcha I understand that. Let's flip it. If you have something that's green and growing healthy for them, it's the same thing. They're going to be getting the vitamins and minerals and everything they need from the, the good from the good green growing plants. Mm -hmm. You really don't need to supplement minerals. If you're supplementing minerals, why can't you just plant the spring and summer plot and just have a whole plot full of it instead of that that circle on the dirt that you're throwing minerals in? Mm -hmm. You well, think you're helping them with the minerals when yeah. you could really be helping them with something green and growing. Well, the, the study quoted too was part of the health of the herd was how healthy is your soil. Okay. Well, well, no kidding. Because the soil gives it to the plants, the plants gives it to the deer. Mm -hmm. So it referenced like four different states and different counties in those states where a certain section of that of that state had high quality soils. The other part had low quality soil and the, the deer health was completely different on both sides. Well, I mean, that's not news. That's not people act like it's a. You know, it's a surprise. Oh, you need right. food to, for healthier deer. Well, I quoted a study 25 years ago uh, on my YouTube channel in Maryland, in Allegheny County, Maryland. It's out, it's out Western Maryland. They have the poorest deer herd in Maryland. Mm -hmm. They determined 25 years ago, it was a lack of food and a lack of soil health. The soil is the poorest soils in Maryland mm -hmm. and the deer herd suffers from it. That was known 25 years ago mm -hmm. and the study also quoted was you feed give the does nutrition they produce healthier offspring and they did this over a course of like five or six years and they actually saw a change in buck fawn ratios so before they were fed a high nutritious diet they were having like one buck to two fawns born after so many years you know feeding the does nutrition and everything it actually flip-flopped to where they were getting two two buck fawns to one doe on on average um well no kidding i mean just think of any human or animal you feed them a healthy diet they express their their full potential you know what i mean like each me and you have a genetic potential um yours is being short um but uh right but if we if me and you transition and ate a 100 percent awesome healthy diet cookies yeah we're going to express a different potential mm -hmm. that's the same with deer if, if they're fed poor if me and you eat poor we're going to be fat we're going to be tired we're going to be you know just no you know whatever but if we've fed a healthy diet 
we're going to be healthier. We're going to have more energy, have more muscles. Yeah. Like I already have now. But yeah. um, you see, what I'm, you see what I'm saying? It, it's right. not – it's a new study. Like, yeah, it's a new like, study on old science. That's what it's it like, is. It's like I just read this thing, and I'm like, this guy. Like I'm not even going to say the guy's name. Well, that's he, why I quit buying hunting magazines. Hey, I didn't buy just, this magazine. I, I, but it was it was the same stuff over and over. Same over, stuff. You know. You know, it, it's just you got to have common sense. You well, know? and it, it's hard to have content sometimes. Even even us, you know, doing these podcasts. I mean, it, it's hard to not beat something to death. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's hard to put a spin on something and and come up with something new all the time. But we always seem to find a way to do it but yeah i mean um we scramble sometimes you know what are we gonna talk about tonight you know mm-hmm. well, <laughs> i just always... love, i just love going to facebook for mine yeah I mean, there's <laughs> so always entertaining something, there's always stuff to talk about it's just you know yeah. what what is it going to be today yeah um, and, and that and you know the other 300 podcasts out there are probably beating it to death too you know for sure yeah, yeah. um you know but yeah, so I mean, three weeks ago, I had a video on my channel where I said, "Don't listen to scientific studies. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't need to listen. You don't need to read this study. Like, it's it was one of the dumbest. Like, it just boils down to common sense. Right. In an area that lacks food, you're gonna lack healthy well, deer. In an I, area my favorite, that has, my favorite saying is the plant 365 have something green growing all mm-hmm. year round, and I'm going to transition this conversation right now. And it, we talk about spring and summer plots like this. You know, you and I like to turkey hunt. You more than me. I'm, I shot a lot of turkeys when I was younger. They don't, they don't turn me on as much anymore. But you get hyped up about turkey. But how, how are you going to bring turkey to you, right? Well, if you have a good plot of something that's green and growing and incorporated with clover and chicory and type things that are shorter Mm -hmm. that turkeys can come in and bug in you know what better is there to bring turkey in than a nice clover field you know Mm -hmm. i mean they love to bug in that stuff we gotta talk about turkeys turkey season's coming hey i'm ready so you got them on camera I do. I have a lot of turkey on camera, um, but turkeys love clover, and it's it's. Sure. I don't want to say it's necessarily the clover. I mean, it is, but it's also the bugs because mm-hmm. anything anything green like a a wheat field that's you well, know, we proved. Coming up. Oh yeah, we proved when we we cut multiple crops open on video, and mm-hmm. it you know some of them were packed full of clover, some of them were packed full of dandelion greens. Yeah. I'm just saying in general, anything, any yeah. green field, clover obviously is, you know, your top notch choice, but sure. they get in there and they bug. And the reason the bugs are there is because the moisture is there. You get the, the water droplets and moisture on the plants. The sun comes out, starts baking it off. You get the, you get the steam and the, and the dew coming off and the bugs get in there. Turkeys know that. So they come in there and, uh, and they start bugging around. And I mean, that's a great plot to have for turkey season turkey season's coming up yeah there's nothing better than seeing turkeys enter the field just strutting around mm-hmm. have you ever planted uh chufa i have not i've planted like milo and things like that before mm-hmm. and it just and i don't i don't know a whole lot about chufa but i know the turkey federations and things that in these in these mm-hmm. uh like what, what is it like grouse unlimited and stuff like that pheasants forever and mm-hmm. they, they like to plant stuff like that because i guess it gets like a seed head on it it does yeah i i've never planted it i've no i know some people that have ducks but it, too ducks like it i guess yeah here. it's directly you know for turkeys really but um deer don't eat it so if you're just looking for a turkey plot chew food would be great i had I had somebody message me today asking if i've ever planted it i i never planted I never it did. But, I know deer don't eat it and it's supposed to be top notch for turkey. So, um, maybe one day I'll, I'll get into it. Um, I mean, that Milo I put out there that I don't think they touched it either. I think the birds just come and pecked it all off, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. You getting, uh, you plant any sunflowers this year? 
I don't know. Them? I don't know because they they just killed they, them. They tear you up. Yeah, I never even got a flower. As soon as they got like four inches tall, they ate them. They come in and mowed them right off. I I don't ever get a flower off of them. That's because you got a doe factor. Yeah. Well, I would have probably have to plant like four acres of them, you know, mm -hmm. to the point that you would ha overwhelm the deer with them, you know, and yeah. maybe they could get a head start. You got a doe factory. I do have a doe problem right now. I do they're have a doe factory. They're looking but, it's, for food. but it's not caused by, you know, what's the adage? Because I planted a food plot that the, the doe stay there well they do stay close so they're they're not dumb mm -hmm. but it's a doe factory is a weird thing to talk about um, <laughs> that's weird it is weird um no the problem is we don't have enough people schlocking does right now you know well it's a it's a time of year where well it's getting over that time of year but it they're looking for food so any any green food source right now they're going to be piled in there oh yeah so it gives yeah. you the the false uh the false appearance of a, a well, lot of deer because they're instead of them being spread out let's face in... it after deer season during deer season they they herd up mm -hmm. strength in numbers mm -hmm. you know now when they start having babies then they'll start dissipating they'll start spreading out they'll yeah yeah you know, yeah. I mean, right now they're still herded up. Yeah, you know? they're looking so, for fawning, fawning grounds, and yeah, want, I mean, you, you, people are calling that deer doe factory, but the deer will disperse themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're 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 hunky dory right now, but like I said, when they start having babies, they don't want other deer around them mm -hmm. so so closely. Anyhow, you yeah. know, they'll start ch they'll chase off the older ones, and you know. That's just it plays out by itself. Yeah, I mean it's just a natural phenomenon. I mean mm -hmm. it just deer don't want to be that close after a while. I mean, yeah, they get the frustrated. Bu the, bucks, the bucks don't either. They they want to be recluse in in a secluded area, and they only want to come out and be friendly right before rut. You know, like me, I want to be, I, mean, I want to be in a in our secluded area right before i go into rut oh okay yeah that's why you smell like that right right my tarsal glands are wash them glands Dave. yeah tar them daggone tarsal glands them daggone things are dark and stinking right um are you doing anything deer activity this weekend this weekend um do you get soul samples yet i did not because it's been too wet and stormy yeah. and I already frost seeded, so I'm not in a, any hurry to do anything. So I'm just waiting for it to dry up a little bit, and I'm going to take them. I may take them like this weekend or something, but yeah. deer related, not a whole lot. I cut I mean, a few trees down out front here, some of those pines. Yep. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't have. A, I might. I bought my fishing license. I might hit the streams if it's not too high. Well, two two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I did a bunch of cutting at the at the farm, uh, and I'm going to go back up here in the next couple of weeks and uh, do some more stuff and um, uh, work on check the clover and keep her moving. Yeah, I I think people are going to be real pleased real soon with their frost seeding. Yeah. If this weather keeps going the way it is, now I looked at the extended and it looks like one cold night that dipped below freezing, but it's going to rebound real fast. I don't think it'll have any detriment on it. Yeah, I mean spots. today's today's the fifth, so I mean next, yeah, things are going to be happening here in the next few weeks. Yep, I'd say at the end of this month you should be pretty clear. I mean, you might get a couple of nights of frost into May, mm -hmm. but. Like I said, it'll it'll rebound quick. I don't think it'll really hurt anything. But don't plant no. anything like buckwheat or so. Yeah. You know. No, I mean wait so, wait for that. I had somebody ask me that real quick a few weeks ago. Is frost? So mm -hmm. each area, each state, each county, each whatever has a frost date. Like yeah. in Maryland, it's May the fifteenth. 
It's always been May the 15th. Mm -hmm. That is the general date of last frost that we get here. The, okay. the further you go up north, that frost date is going to be longer. Mm -hmm. you know, later in later into the later month. Later into the season, yeah. Right. Later the further you go down south, that number that date is going to go back into you know early May, end of April. Mm -hmm. So people always ask me, well, when do you plant? Well, you got to go by your frost date. You know, simple Google search. I can't remember who I was telling this to. Simple Google search and it'll tell you your frost date. Yeah, on average. Look, yeah. On average. Look at that. And that's going to give you a general time frame within plus or minus a week or something mm -hmm. of when it would be safe to plant. So instead of thinking, oh, I got to plant in April, I got to plant in May, I got to plant in June. No, you, you, you plant according to when your last frost is. Is it 100% accurate? Close. It, it, you can't, it's very close. Um, so go by that instead of of uh you mean you, you mean you can't turn the bag over and look what zone you're in and plan it to that no because it's all it's all general <laughs> you're getting me fired up here <laughs> why just, not dave what about just, the recommendations that's all general it's, it's, general. it's general for people that don't want to get a soil sample or whatever it is but i mean we yeah. we've already beat that, we that, beat that horse. horse yeah so with Dad, that said, uh, I think we've had enough for one night. Yep. I'm hungry and uh, Chris is getting cranky. So episode 15 guys, uh, we're going to tune out and uh, we'll catch you yep. back here on number 16. All right, guys. Goodbye. Later. Subscribe.